Today, let me continue on with the series, the series on extraordinary. And today, the topic is extraordinary appointment. Extraordinary appointment. A few weeks ago, I heard this story from a member. He said there was this family from Singapore moved to Vancouver, Canada. They bought a house and they settled down. One morning, the wife went out to dispose the garbage. At the same time, the neighbor also came out. And therefore, they chatted. And in the course of the uh, conversation, this uh, person came to know the neighbor came from Penang, Malaysia. And therefore, she asked her, do you happen to know Lim Chin Huat? Then the woman looked at her and she said, he's my son. A coincidence? Just a few weeks ago, Kerisda, we went back to Ipo to visit my mother-in-law. One night after dinner, we drove home. So I parked the car at the porch of the engine. Then I realized that there's still the sound of the engine, very strange. So then I switched on the ignition again, and then I off it again. Still there's a sound of the engine. So I was a bit puzzled. So I opened the bonnet, and lo and behold, I realized that the fan was still running, even though the ignition was off. At that moment, I said to myself, what am I going to do? It's about 9 p.m. at night. For me, I can only drive. That's it. I don't have to fix any you know, car problems. So at that very moment, the neighbor across the road came home. He realized that we were having a situation at hand, so he walked over and we told him what happened. Then he said, I knew of a mechanic, let me try to call him. So he called the mechanic and the mechanic came over within four minutes and he fixed the problem. Thank God. A coincidence? Just at that very moment, the neighbor came back. Yes, at times, it could be a coincidence. But you know, there is such a thing as a divine appointment or extraordinary appointment. An extraordinary appointment is one orchestrated and engineered by the Holy Spirit. That out of the extraordinary appointments, that's where we experience the move, the leading, the intervention, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And church, let me say this. There are basically two types of extraordinary appointments. The first type, we are the recipients where we experience God meeting a need in our lives at a very special moment. Second, we are the conduits where God uses us to minister or to touch someone else's life. So there's two types of extraordinary appointments. Tell me how many of you, you have experienced such, such moments, such appointments? Yes, 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 a good number of you. That's God's divine or extraordinary appointments. I still remember there was one time, experience one, where I was the recipient. It took place in July 2012. I still remember. Because in July 2012, my father-in-law passed away. So after the funeral, I flew back from Ipoh to Singapore. And also in June 2012, that's where as a church, we received the good news about the approval from URA 
for the block ratio 1.4 for the redevelopment of 355 Tangling Road. So finally we received that approval, and of course we were elated and we celebrated. But deep down in my heart, as the senior pastor of the church, I sensed a very heavy responsibility upon me that I have to lead this rebuilding program. And you know, at that time, the budget was about $66 million. It is a lot of money, and we don't have that amount with us. So I remember after hearing the piece of good news, I said, Lord, this is your church. This is your project. This is your problem, not my problem. And I said, Lord, I commit to you. I surrender to you. You help me. You help us as a church to, to experience you in this whole rebuilding project. Then it was on that flight home from Ipoh. I sat beside a woman. Halfway through the flight, she turned to me and she said, you are embarking on a new project. The Lord will bless you. Wow. I don't know her. Suddenly, she turned around. I was taken aback. But I knew this is the word of the Lord to me. To assure me that in this rebuilding project, He is with us. That I can rely on Him that we will experience God's blessing. So it was a very special, extraordinary appointment that I experienced. So we thank God for such, such moments. And I pray that you and I, that we will experience more of God through such appointments. So today, we shall look at the life of Philip. He had a very powerful extraordinary appointment with God, where God used him to be a channel of blessing to someone. It is recorded in the book of Acts. As you know, in the book of Acts, we, we see mass conversion. On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 souls were saved. Then later, another 5,000 souls were added into the kingdom of God. But today's text is different. Instead of seeing a massive number, we see one man being converted. So let's turn to Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Here we see a detour directed by the Spirit. A detour directed by the Spirit. Philip was in Sam Samaria preaching the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then an angel of the Lord told him, go to the south, go to the desert road. Wow. An angel of the Lord appeared to him and told him to go south. Let me ask you, how many of you here have experienced an angel appearing before you and telling you what to do? No one? Someone? Wow. For me, I only hear from angel carries. That's it. But for Philip, what an extraordinary moments for him. Yes, most of us, we have not experienced such ange angelic uh, appearances. But point is, we all have the Holy Spirit. Because here in verse 29, the Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. The Holy Spirit directed him. The point is that the Holy Spirit is always at work directing our steps, leading us and guiding us and speaking to us. Most of us who drive, at times we use the GPS, right? The global 
positioning system. We use that. Very helpful because it directs us, it shows us the way. But I want you to know, church, we have a more powerful GPS. And that's God's powerful spirit. Amen. And that is the Holy Spirit, God's powerful spirit leading us and directing our step. Here, Philip experienced a detour directed by the Spirit. And I know from time to time, the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. And that's when you experience the leading of the Holy Spirit. Then secondly, in verse 27, so he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. Here is a divine setup. A divine setup by the Holy Spirit. Here, Philip met the Ethiopian eunuch, a high ranking official, a minister of finance. And surely God has a purpose for Philip to meet this eunuch. So, a divine setup. Let us move on to verse 29. Let me just read a few verses, not all. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked, how can I, he said, unless someone explains to it to me. And you read the scriptures, Philip went on to explain and to expound the scripture and the eunuch understood as a result, he gave his heart to Jesus Christ and he got baptized. Here is about a dedicated messenger of God. And that's Philip. When Philip allows the Lord to use him in such a special moment. So from these few verses, first of all, a detour directed by the Spirit, then a divine setup, then a dedicated messenger of the Lord. So what can we learn from this uh, powerful, extraordinary appointment that Philip experienced? Let me highlight six very important truths. First of all, the big idea is this. The Holy Spirit directs and guides us right to where He wants us if we only listen and obey. So this is the, the big idea. So let me highlight the six important truths. Number one, God is the first mover. When I say God is the first mover, I'm saying that God is always the initiator, that He joined the dots. We can see in the scripture, we experience it in our own lives. And there's from time to time, God will lead us to meet someone or cross paths with another someone and out of that meeting an appointment, extraordinary thing will take place. That's the leading of the Holy Spirit. That God, you know, initiate the move. God directs our path. And I pray that you begin to experience more and more of the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life and you be sensitive and you be open. Talking about crossing another person's path, I came to know that in grace too, that this uh, man, one day he was in the Tampines areas and he lost his way, he could not find you know, the destination he wants to go and he decided to stop and ask someone. And he asked a lady. As a result of that special, you know, uh, moment, they got to know each other. And today, they are husband and wife. Like they also can. <laughs> so, man, just ask, okay? You lost your way. God is the first mover. I want to encourage you. When you wake up in the morning, Yes, there are many things on your mind. You may be anxious about, you know, the, the, the programs or days ahead, the challenges, but I want you to learn to pray in the morning. You say, God, today, lead me step by step. 
Holy Spirit, direct my path. That I may experience you this day in the course of my work. Let there be an extraordinary appointment. Let me meet someone that, Lord, that you would just engineer it, direct my path in such a way that I will experience you in a very special way. Learn to pray such prayer. And let the Holy Spirit direct your path. God is the first mover. Second truth is this. God is interested in individuals. Here you can see from this story, God was interested in the eunuch. He's interested in you, in me, because he wants to experience him. He's interested in your friends, in your family members, in your college life. He's interested because God wants them to experience Him. So God is interested in everyone because He wants to experience Him. That's why Jesus came to die for our sins, that we may experience Him and experience more of His grace upon our lives. Thirdly, the third truth, only God can satisfy the deep needs of the soul. This eunuch, a high-ranking officer, a minister of finance, so we can say he's a person with certain status, right? He has a position, definitely. I'm sure there's certain power that he has and privileges and maybe possessions. In other words, he has a lot. And yet, deep down, in his heart, in his soul, you know, he realized that he lacks something. Void inside him, emptiness inside him. That's why there is the hunger and thirst for for something more. That's why he searched for the truth and searched for God in his life. So he may be rich, he may be somebody, but the fact is that There's emptiness inside of him. Church, you know, someone can be wealthy and yet can be spiritually bankrupt. In Singapore, this is a very wealthy nation. But yet I know many people, even though they have a lot in life and yet they are so dissatisfied, there's the emptiness inside of them There's always the search for more. That's why we see many people, they are always on the pursuit to to get more, hoping the more they have, the happier they will be. But the fact, sadly, it is not so. In fact, for many people, the more they have, the more unhappier they become and a greater sense of emptiness within their soul. As you know, in Singapore, we are famous for the pursuit of the five C's, right? So many people go after the five C's, hoping, praying that the five C's will to satisfy their hearts, but they realize that, hey, the five C's are not enough. By the way, do you know that today we have moved on from the five C's to eight double C's? You know what are the eight double C's? Who knows? You don't know? Okay, let me tell you. Eight double C's. The first double C's is credit card. Simple. Lah. But today, not just any ordinary credit card. It must be infinite. Okay? Credit card. Second is not just cash, but cool cash. That means lots of money. Cool cash. Third, not just a condo, must be a chic condo. That means, you know, something extra upmarket kind of condo. Fourth, not just a car, but a chauffeured car. Ah, all right. Of course, a country club like Sentosa, SICC. Then six is a challenging career. Must be a, a challenging, a good job. I must have a challenging career. Number seven is... China connection, uh, a property in China, some kind of business connection in China. Then finally, the eight double C's, guess what? Clever children. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, even with the eight double C's, our soul will not be satisfied. We need one double C that is Christ-centered. Jesus inside of us. That's why we are rich in Him. So here the eunuch was not satisfied. He wanted more. Thank God he experienced the grace of God. The fourth truth is this. God wants to work through us. Here the Lord used Philip. I want you to know that Philip, he was not an apostle, nor a missionary, nor a full-time pastor. He was just a layman like most of you here. But he allowed the Lord to use him. That at that very moment, there was this eunuch who was open and ready to embrace the love of Jesus Christ. And therefore, I want you to know there are people that you meet. Their hearts are open. Because someone has talked to them about Jesus, that people are praying for them, that there's a moment their hearts are just open. And when you meet them, there's God's divine appointment for you, and you can begin to reach out to that person. And I pray that you and I will be open and be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. One person leading another person. You see, most of us, we are not called to preach to a big crowd. But like Philip, there's one thing we could do, and that is to just talk to someone and lead someone to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So be sensitive and be open and let the Lord lead you that you experience God's extraordinary appointment in this area where you, God will use you to bless someone. I still remember vividly uh, an appointment that I had some years back. I know I shared this before, but let me share it again because many of you have not heard it before. And I want you to begin to see the hand of God and the Holy Spirit in this situation. At that time, we were still in Hong Kong. Then we were invited to attend a birthday celebration of a man, his 60th birthday celebration. A man of status in uh, Hong Kong, running a huge corporation. We came to know him and his wife through another creation, but we don't really know them. Just, just uh, we met them maybe once or twice, but they invited us to his birthday party. So initially, I was a bit reluctant to go. One, because we don't really know them. And secondly, it was quite a distance from where we were staying in Hong Kong. But finally, we decided to go because they were pre-Christians. And we felt that it could be an opportunity for us to, to connect with them. So that evening, we went to the house. It was a big house in Hong Kong with swimming pool, all right? In Hong Kong, that has to be big. And then uh, many guests were there. We walked into the house and they were at the entrance. So we just greeted them, shook their hands and said, happy birthday, congratulations. So we stayed for about half an hour and then we left. But the amazing thing, the next few days, the wife, told the Gratian that knows her. She said, on that night, when your pastor shook my hand, I just sensed a sensation, a warm sensation flowing through my body. It was a very nice feeling. And I could not describe that feeling. But I want, you, I want to know what is that feeling, that sensation. She asked that Gratian that we... No. And the Christian told her, well, likely it could be the touch of God, the presence of God at that very moment that you experience, you know, the Holy Spirit. As a result of that, she was more curious, more open to know more about God because of that experience. To cut a long story short, there was a time she came in from Hong Kong and she attended Grace 2. And in that service, she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So there was a special, extraordinary appointment with God for her. 
And out of that experience, I wish, I wish every time I shake somebody's hand, something will just go through. But it doesn't happen that way. But at that particular moment for her, the Lord touched her. So when we allow God to use us, the Holy Spirit empowers in a very special way. And also in this story, you realize Philip has to explain the scripture to the eunuch. Because the eunuch said, I cannot understand. So Philip expounded the word of God to him. The point is this church, we must know the word of God. Because there are times we're going to give a reason for our faith. And there are times we need to explain the Bible, the scripture to someone. So therefore, a good understanding of the scripture will help us to be a better channel of blessing, a vessel that God can use to minister to someone. So the point is, take time to dig deep into the Word of God. The more you know the Word of God, the more you know God. The more you know God, the more you begin to experience Him in a very special way. So the point is, God wants to work through us. The sixth truth is this. God will fulfill His purpose through the different extraordinary appointments. Here in this situation, Philip was being used by God. And the eunuch came to know the Lord and he even got baptized. God's purpose was being fulfilled. And subsequently, it led to the expansion of the kingdom of God. According to history, that this Yuna, he went to minister to his own people in Ethiopia. As a result of that, many came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God always worked through such extraordinary appointments. Yes, for us to experience Him, but more than that, the fulfillment of His will and His purposes and the extension and expansion of the kingdom of God is for His glory. And finally, the sixth truth is this. God is able to turn a situation around by His extraordinary intervention. Through every divine appointment or extraordinary appointments, God intervenes in a very special way. And therefore the question is, how do you see your appointments in your life? Let me say this, don't just treat your appointments as an ordinary appointment. Because the point is this, God can turn an ordinary appointment into an extraordinary appointment. God can do that. God can intervene. God can bring about a powerful breakthrough through that appointment that you have. So therefore, we need to be more sensitive and look at every appointment and begin to say, hey, maybe out of this appointment, I, I can experience more of God. I can minister to someone. We avail of our lives to the Lord. And not only that, an expected meeting can become an extraordinary appointment. Whatever meetings may, may be, God can turn it around. And also, an unexpected detour can also become an extraordinary appointment. We don't like detour, but God can use your detour, just like Philip, a detour directed by the Spirit, and you begin to experience God. And not only that, an unexpected delay can also become an extraordinary appointment. We don't like delays, but God can use every delay for His glory. And finally, let me say this, an unexpected crisis can become an extraordinary appointment. The crisis that you're facing right now, whether it's about a physical health situation, a family situation, a financial situation, whatever crisis, God can turn it around and make it into an extraordinary appointment. Just on Friday, I met with a brother. He works with 
as I am. And he shared with me this story. That recently they had a special conference in Oxford, England. And there were pastors that came from different parts of the world. And there were a few pastors from Africa. And at that meeting, a Nigerian pastor stood up and he shared this very moving story. You know, in Nigeria, especially in some parts, they have this uh, Boko Haram, a terrorist group, and they go around killing uh, people, especially Christians and churches. And this pastor book in the area from time to time, the Boko Haram uh, bandits will attack them. There was one day, he said, he was driving with his son in the car. As he was driving, as he looks ahead, he realized that there was a jeep coming towards them. A jeep filled with Boko Haram bandits, with rifles and machetes. Immediately, he stopped the car because fear gripped his heart. Because at that point, he knew something very nasty can happen to him and the son. So immediately, he took off his clergy collar. At the same time, you know, he, he was playing Christian music. He turned it off. I'm sure you can guess why he did that. But the son said, Dad, don't you remember our promise? Because there was a time when the father talked to the son about their lives and the situation. The father told the son, Son, there may be a time where we have to decide between Jesus and death. If ever such moment were to come to us, we must always choose Jesus. We must prepare to die for Jesus and stand firm on our faith. Therefore, the son said, Dad, don't you remember our promise? The father remembered. And immediately at that point, he put back the clergy collar and switched on the, the player to listen to the Christian songs again. Then he just drove forward. As he drove forward, the jeep also came towards them. But then the jeep just passed them by. Just passed them by. As though that they did not see them. It could not be. So that they believed that God blinded their eyes. God protected them from that situation. And after that, the son said to the father, Dad, when I grow up, I want to be a pastor because our God is real. Because our God is real. So out of that extraordinary appointment, they experienced God in such a real way. That God turned the crisis around. And you know the potential consequences. Not only being captured, but death. But God delivered them. That's why I want to say to you this afternoon, God can turn your crisis into an extraordinary appointment. I know even many creations of the different challenges of life, they experience more of God. So for this afternoon, I want you to believe if you're facing a crisis at this point, you surrender that to the Lord. And you say, God, I put my hope in you and I know that you can turn my situation around. That out of this crisis, this, this delay, this detour, you will turn into an extraordinary appointment. Extraordinary appointment. It is my prayer that you and I will continue to put our faith, our trust in the Lord, 
that in this journey, that we're going to experience God in a very special way, that you experience more of such extraordinary appointments in your life, because out there you experience God in a greater measure. That's where your faith will be strengthened, and not only that, you experience the mighty hand of God setting you free, delivering you, and God doing a miracle in your life and your situation. Maybe for some of you here today, you do need or you do desire such an extraordinary appointment. Look to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. 